Give me paint. Red paint. First, build a battle droid. Now I did cover this in a series of videos that you can check out linked in the description down below. But essentially, I made it out of khaki yoga mats, solely so that I wouldn't have to paint but at a certain point acquired so much damage that I ended up having to paint just to cover up all the burn marks. I was so naive. So for this build, I used craft foam, floor mat foam, half cylinder foam, dowel foam, coffee foam, putty, super glue, hot glue, contact cement, Halloween store bones, or real bones, I don't know your life, a wooden dowel, regular wood, paint, cutting tools, sanding tools, safety gear, scissors, razor pens, and a box cutter. Cold opens aside, this build is gonna be a bit more involved than just a fresh coat of paint. I'm gonna have to completely rebuild the head, slim down the torso, and add a whole bunch of gadgets and greeblies. I started by making a completely new neck out of wood, specifically a cutting board. Mostly I'm using foam in this build, but anything that has to support weight needs to be made out of something more sturdy. I'm using wood or PVC pipe, although I think there's a metal post in there somewhere. I'm making this to more closely resemble the movie battle droids as opposed to the animated ones that I was originally going for back when I built this the first time around. I did like the shape of the head though so I pulled a template off of that and trimmed it up just to get rid of those jagged edges then I transferred that onto cardboard cut that out and transferred that onto EVA foam yoga mats. I'm using yellow here because at the time I was out of red. If you have the option it will save you some time when you paint to use the same color foam as the final output. Mr. Bones has a more jagged beak than typical battle droids, so to incorporate that into the design, I cut out notches, in the end, with scissors. Then I cut it out with a box cutter. Despite my endless sharpening, the edges still came out jagged, so I smoothed them out with my rotary tool and my belt sander. This setup is a great way to keep dust out of your apartment, also a great way to lose your workpiece out the window totally not speaking from experience. Then I cut out the eyes with the razor pen. That sounds so horrible out of context. I had to sand those out with the rotary tool. You could also cut out circles with a pipe, but I don't think I have one that's quite that diameter. Note to self, more tools. Infinite tools. I refined the beak more as I studied the reference photos. It's a good idea to always check your work. I heat formed it and held it in a curved shape with a tape spool while it cooled. Then I attached the ribs to an internal truss, uh, half a PVC pipe, to hold it in that shape permanently. I covered the eye holes because they're meant to be sunken, not hollow all the way through. Then I glued it to the ribbed structure. So the problem with uh, hot glue in this particular instance is it doesn't want to stick to plastic right there. So if you're doing this and you have power tools, you know, I'd recommend getting a really wide wooden dowel and just cutting it in half instead. So yeah, I'm gonna end up holding it together with external uh, foam plating, but you know, it'll, it'll work for my purposes. I closed up the bottom with EVA foam plates and then made the skull cap, which I also heat formed, and then I glued it on with hot glue. Once it was all together, I refined it even more on the belt sander. A flat surface is always better for gluing. Then I added a rectangular piece to the left eye, but not the right eye, because Mr. Bones has a lot of modifications to the right eye. In fact, I may have to cut into it even more. Next, I made this snake-like curve to the back of the head by heat forming foam, the same as I've been doing. Kinda looks like a shoe from the side, from this angle. I had to add more internal supports so that it would hold its shape, because yeah, I am gonna have to cut into it later, and that's, that's gonna put a lot of stress on it. I cut those pie pieces to go underneath the back of the head, then I painted it. Initially, I thought this was gonna be a great excuse for me to use up my red Plasti Dip because I hardly ever use Plasti Dip anymore, and I was immediately reminded of why I never use it anymore. It's super toxic, you gotta wear a mask, you don't get a lot of coverage per can as far as square footage is concerned, and it doesn't dry much faster than water based or acrylic based paint. I mean, I guess it technically dries pretty quickly, like within half an hour but it still gives off these toxic fumes for like a day afterwards and there's gonna be a lot of close work done on this head so you're almost literally painting yourself into a corner I had such high hopes for the plastic dip because of how vibrant it looks in this shot but all of that evaporated so I switched to latex house paint for the other parts of the droid those are the details that go on the back of the head as well as one of the kidneys that, that bar there that handlebar there is one of the kidneys I um I don't know what else to call them. You know, it's a robot. You know, Luke actually calls them robots at one point in the movie. 
And I'm wondering if that was a gaffe or it's just an acceptable term that we only hear once in this nine movie franchise. It is nine movies, right? I guess 12, right? There've been some spinoffs. Tangent, what's going on? The neck parts broke because they got knocked around on the bottom of a shipping crate, thanks TSA. But I was able to just glue them back together with wood glue. While those pieces are dry, I added detail to the arms. I started with the joints, just because they looked kind of kind of blank, kind of vacant. Those are cat toys that happen to be made out of EVA foam. Who knew? Odin Abbott. Sure Bill also knew. I'm not a cat person, but all of my friends are cat people. So I figured whatever I don't use in this build can go to them. You know, I cut them in half to bulk out the joints. I attached them with hot glue. Could have used super glue for this or contact cement, but contact cement is overkill. Then I super glued foam bevels around the edge and moved up the shoulders where I attached a half of a M&M container, not a sponsor. This is an off cut from the Fennec Shand helmet, the orange Boba Fett helmet. I saved it because the slanted cut came out pretty good and now I can reuse it as a detail piece for Mr. Bones. I just got rid of the texture over on the belt sander trimmed off that slanted edge. Perfect. So I added foam pieces of the arms to make them more screen accurate to the movie droids and used foam cylinders to make the hydraulic pistons. Are they pneumatic? I don't know. I weighed that down with a metal machinist block. I also bulked up the upper arm and the wrist. Then I added half cylinders. And finally, I used up the last of my red plastidip, never buying that stuff again. When it dried, I dismantled a toy sword to use as his hidden blade. When the plastidip was dry, I painted the upper arm flat black which dries very quickly. So shortly thereafter, I was able to attach the blade. I did that real quick and dirty with hot glue and scrap foam. After that, I attached the hand in the folded back configuration, although it's easily reversible. Now for the torso. I don't believe that Mr. Bones has the backpack. So I removed that. Now I've always been bothered with the width of the torso. So I sliced out the edges of each panel, essentially the corners, and then glued all the reduced sides back together, which gives me better dimensions but some real ugly seams like just ugh, so awful not my best seams <laughs> let's go ahead and fill those in kind of taking a risk here because this doesn't dry quite as fast as Alex fast dry the stuff I normally use but every hardware store I've been to is out so originally this was a Clone Wars battle droid like the animated ones so it didn't need as much detail as uh, a movie battle droid. That's because it was for a comedy skit. But over the years, the, <laughs> the lack of detail has been bugging me and I haven't been able to justify taking the time to fix it like this until now when there's all of a sudden interest in Mr. Bones. So I kept the old droid head. So if I ever need a regular battle droid, I can just paint them back and swap out the different pieces. Once those were filled in, I built up the shoulders. I used short segments of foam bevels for the detail. Next, I painted it red, this time using gloss red acrylic latex house paint, which for the coverage in terms of square footage is so much cheaper than plastidip and it looks a little better too. For real, that can of plastidip only lasted for the head and the arms. This can of red paint, it's almost empty. There's like half inch of paint in there and it covered the whole rest of the droid. So, you know, do with that what you will. While it's drying, I worked on the legs. Mr. Bones is supposed to have extra ball and socket joints for increased agility. So for those, I use bath bomb molds. I trace and cut circular holes in the legs for them to fit into. Oh, those gloves I'm wearing aren't a prop making thing. My hands are just covered in red paint and uh, it freaked some people out in the last prop build because uh, it was out of context. I was working on this while working on the last build. It uh, caught some people off guard. Also, it gets cold in this shop. Just saying, support me on Patreon so I can buy a space heater. I can buy a space heater. Pay the electric bill generated by the space heater. There we go. I glued both bombs in place. To add detail to the joints, I used four pack drink caps cut up with my side cutters. I also had knee guard spikes. Then I painted the legs red. I hung them up using brackets from the Lord of the Rings sword build and moved on. By this time, the chest was dry. So I did more work on that. I did forget one of the chest panels. So I had to add that back with two millimeter craft foam. That has been driving me insane for years. So glad I did that. And then to create the rib cage pattern, I masked off strips with painter's tape, then painted the exposed areas with flat black paint. So it, it's killing me that I didn't add the restraining bolt, but it's specifically in canon that he has no restraining bolt, which is why he's such a deadly droid. He's unrestricted. 
So I think I'll just make that on my own time in case I have to convert them back to a regular battle droid. A standing battle droid punching bag just at my disposal is so useful in cutaway gags. Can't even tell you how many times I've used it. Although at this point it might be easier just to build a regular battle droid from scratch. I don't know, cross that bridge when I come to it. Then I removed the tape because paint always seems to sneak under it somehow. I filled in a few of the mistakes and then deepened the red on the center panel. I set that aside to dry and then added black accents to the legs. Most Mostly on the joints, but the left leg has some black on it as well. Now, by this point, the red plastic dip on the head from the beginning of the video has dried, and you can see up close why I'm not crazy about it. It's, it's those drips, mostly. Luckily, the design of this droid specifically lends itself to fixing that, so let's go for it. First, I carved out the right eye. I'm gonna save that panel so I can use it as debris. Then I sanded the rough edges of the cut. That yellow is way too conspicuous, so I covered it up with black two millimeter craft foam strips. Now I have to fill up that cavity with sci-fi gak. I used some larger pieces initially and then covered up the surroundings with foam circles and bevels. This simulates the look of wires and technology. For the eye, I used an old vacuum tube and a spare DRD eye. DRD is the droids from Farscape. If you like Star Wars, you should check out Farscape. It's basically like if some network gave a budget to all those sci-fi purists who are all like practical effects over CGI. So they spend it all on practical effects and there's nothing left for for actors or writers. So they're forced to write on the fly and shoot the whole thing in Australia. It's great. It's amazing. Obligatory Farscape tangent accomplished. Moving on. I attached the eye into the head using a nail as a push pin. Then I glued the greeblies to the back of the head and glued a cylinder into the middle made out of the cylinder and scrap foam. I glued that to the wooden neck. Then I added this notched wooden peg to fit into the torso slot. I heavily glued that in place because it's gonna be a lot of stress on it, and I was done. Finally, I assembled all the pieces to form a complete droid. Last but not least though, I attached the bones. And that's how to make Mr. Bones. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this build, then you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to see upcoming builds. Because let's be honest, the subscribe button doesn't do what it used to. And if you actually want to get notified about upcoming builds, then you gotta hit that bell icon. Otherwise they'll be lost to the infinite scroll of your inbox. Be sure to leave a comment below to let me know what you'd like to see me make next. And lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons, the name scrolling by, who make these videos possible. To actually build something takes a whole lot more time and money. These videos just wouldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. So if you enjoy these builds, want to see more of them, and want your build request to carry a bit more weight, then think about heading on over to the Patreon page, where you can enjoy ad-free early uploads. Thanks for watching, happy crafting, see you later.